Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime, and look, we've been sort of waiting all year, really since Breath of the Wild 2 was delayed, to find out what sort of Zelda stuff could be coming this year. Nintendo has been doing something Zelda related every single year, really, of Switch's life. Uh, it doesn't really seem to matter what it is. Maybe it's a Portal Hyrule Warriors or Age of Calamity or Cadence of Hyrule or whatever the case might be. There's something every single year, and it hasn't always been DLC. People talk about how, oh, adding games to NSO. Actually, they didn't really consider that. Uh, if you look at it, I think it was 2017, we had Breath of the Wild. 2018, I believe, was the Port of Hyrule Warriors uh, Definitive Edition. 2019 was... Uh, Link's Awakening remake, right? We had the remake in 2019. Uh, 2020 was, I believe, Age of Calamity. Uh, 2021 was Skyward Sword HD. And now here we are in 2022, and currently there is nothing on slate. So a lot of us have been waiting for what feels like the most obvious thing for Nintendo to do, given that they have ported practically every other game except the Xenoblade Chronicles X, for some reason, uh, from the Wii U, and that is bringing Wind Waker and Twilight Princess HD to Switch. And we've even had some reports and rumors around this with some journalists, some insiders, uh, presuming that maybe last year, you know, at the Zelda 35th anniversary, that we would potentially see these games. Uh, but they just sort of knew that they were ported and ready to go, not really knowing when they were going to come out. And one of the chief people behind uh, some of those reports was Jeff Grubb, who basically stated he knew the games were done and ready to go. He just didn't know when they were going to drop. He thought they might drop it for Zelda's 35th. They didn't. Uh, and so maybe, hey, this year would make sense with Breath of the Wild 2 delayed. Of course, we know Nintendo already has a pretty good slate of games for this year. Maybe they could fit some more in, but it, it feels like a pretty packed slate. And we do know that there's been no General Direct this summer. So if they were going to announce something like this at a General Direct, we actually have to have the General Direct and we haven't had it. So, so the question is, are we still going to get it? Well, Jeff Grubb had a question asked uh, of him on Twitter by Commander Peep. I said, do you think we're still getting Zelda ports or is that out of the question now? And this was because Jeff Grubb is on record right now saying he is very, very sure, very, very sure that we are getting the Metroid Prime 1 remaster, remake, whatever Nintendo decides uh, to call it this holiday season. In fact, he is so certain, so certain that during a kind of funny games, uh, daily chats, it's like a podcast that Kind of Funny uh, does. Uh, in the live chat, he literally told everyone in the chat, he is so sure the Metroid Prime 1 remake, remaster, whatever they call it, is coming this year, that if it does not happen, he will shave his head. And you want to know how big of a deal that is here? Here's a picture of Jeff Grubb. Yeah, he likes his hair. He likes that long, flowing locks, that takes sometimes a lifetime to achieve. So for him to say he's willing to shave his head if Metro Prime One Remake doesn't happen, that's a that's a that, that's a committed man. We could say that. So getting back to the original question, he was asked past on June twenty seventh uh, if we're still going to get the Zelda ports because he's previously hinted that they could be coming this year, not for sure, but could be coming. And here was his response. He said, "I don't know for sure." Again, sticking by the whole, "Hey, I don't know." But I'm still betting that Zelda ports are soon. They want a Zelda game every year. And I just went over the list. They've had one every year. And I think these are next up. So he doesn't have exact information, but he says, this actually just makes a lot of logical sense, right? It does make a lot of logical sense. They're not going to need a ton of time to promote the games either. They didn't have a ton of time to promote Skyward Sword HD. So I don't think they need a ton of time to promote these sorts of ports. Obviously, the biggest question we have as fans, besides are they coming this year or are they not, is would Nintendo box them together? Would they, would they not? I know there are some of you out there that actually think what Nintendo's waiting to do with these games is they're waiting for the DLSS Switch, whether it's a Switch 2, a Switch Pro. They're waiting for that to come out, whether it comes out this year, comes out next year, comes out the year after. Whenever they release it, some people think maybe they're holding the games for that because then they can boast an improvement for those games. Because obviously Skyward Sword HD, the first time Skyward Sword's officially been in HD. Link's Awakening Remake, hey, not only the first time it's been on HD, it was also re 
made. Uh, you know, Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition is the first time we've actually had all of that content together on home console because they split it up in the past between Hyrule Warriors on Wii U and Hyrule Warriors Legends on 3DS. There was a split in the content. They put it all together in Definitive Edition on console. So that made some sense to Nintendo. But doing this could be, hey, we're just bringing an HD, you know, 60 FPS or whatever game, and we're just direct porting that over. And that feels a little bit less than what we did with prior games on our platform for the Zelda franchise. So maybe they want to wait for the 4K DLSS so then they can boast, hey, you can now play Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD, and they might not even call it that, for the first time in 4K, thanks to DLSS. Uh, and that could be an advertising point for them. Of course, they can still release the games now, and that could still be true when that system comes out because DLSS is literally up games. So they could basically just be the same games, but... For marketing reasons, maybe try to advertise them as 4K. I, I I think that that is obviously something they could do. And we have to also remember in the back of our minds, and, and Nintendo's still going to need Zelda ports in future years, and other ports are going to take more work. Ocarina of Time 3D, um, Majora's Mask 3D, they're going to need to be reworked to be in HD and come out. That's going to take some more effort. Uh, bringing back any of the old school top-down games is going to need more work and effort. So, yeah, they could release both this year. They could just release one of them as well. I think we all know Nintendo would love to release the Windbreaker HD as a standalone game for 60 bucks. Same with Twilight Princess. Obviously, a lot of us want the double pack, and maybe that is what Nintendo is going to do, and maybe that is the selling point is, hey, you know, it's a double pack, not a single, and that's why you should pay 60 bucks or 80 bucks or whatever they decide to charge for it. But, but I do fully, honestly, truly believe that those games are going to come. And Nintendo could split them up. We could say, I don't know, get Twilight Princess HD this year, leading into Breath of the Wild 2, and then see the Wind Waker HD pop out in 2024. As in, you know, it, it would make sense for Nintendo to maybe split the games up so we still get that Zelda release every year, and that gives them an easy release to use to plug in after Breath of the Wild. We're also waiting an Age of Calamity DLC announcement, too. I, I feel like we've been waiting a while for the Age of Calamity DLC announcement. Uh, maybe we're not going to get an Age of Calamity DLC announcement. That would be rather interesting. Or maybe there's a tie-in with Breath of the Wild 2, that, and that's why they're waiting to announce it. Like, hey, we need to announce this one thing for Breath of the Wild 2. I don't know, maybe the title of the game, uh, in order for them to announce the Age of Calamity DLC. Because, remember, it's a prequel Lots of debates over whether it's canon or not, but it's supposedly a prequel according to A.G. Anomo. So we'll have to wait and see uh, if there's some sort of tie-in with the DLC, and that's why we haven't, haven't had a huge announcement for it yet. But here's the, the big thing that I'm thinking about in the back of my mind, and that is this just makes too much sense. Look, he's not committing to this like he did uh, with Metroid Prime 1 uh, Remake, Remaster, whatever, because he's just one thousand percent sure that's happening so much so he's putting his lovely locks on the line he's not doing that here because he doesn't know for sure he just knows they've been ported and he just thinks it makes too much logical sense he also thought it made sense last year for the zelda 35th anniversary so for what it is it making logical sense nintendo doesn't always do the logical thing uh, i think we've known this as nintendo fans over the last However many years, Nintendo and Logic don't always go together. Sometimes they just do things whenever the hell they feel like it or do things just to be different. As an example, do any of us look back fondly on the GameCube and, and say that the mini discs were really the right direction to go for that platform? Remember, they just did the mini discs to be different. They could have fit a full fat you know, laser reader in there for full size DVDs, CDs, or whatever. They could have done that. They didn't do it because they wanted to be different and they bet on a technology that never really took off. Mini discs did not last for very long in the market, mostly because a smaller disc means less data. People want more data, not less. And that's why Blu-rays and stuff eventually came around. They could hold significantly more, but are the same compact disc size. So yeah, I you know, Nintendo doesn't always make the right calls and the right decisions, and and sometimes they do things just to be different. I, I will say this, going back to cartridges on Switch was the right 
move. It kept the convenience factor that other platforms have lost when you have forced game installs. Sure, we still have some of that on Switch. You get don't get an entire game sometimes on cartridges, especially from third parties, but you can pop Breath of the Wild in and just play it right away without updating the game, and that's really, really cool and still a convenience factor Switch has over pretty much all their competitors at this point. The Steam Deck doesn't even have physical media because it's a PC device. Uh, and while physical media still exists for the other platforms, you still have to install it, and the discs end up just becoming an unlock key. It, it, you know, whatever. I mean, yeah, you can resell that key to somebody else, and that's a cool, still a cool uh, advantage. But anyways, what I really want to know are what do you guys think about the possible this coming? And always remember to hype responsibly because I'm not telling you Wind Waker or Twilight Princess HD or both are actually coming this year, but Jeff Grubb thinks it makes a lot of sense. I tend to agree that it also makes a lot of sense, and I'm more curious if they are going to come this year, and the Metroid Prime 1 remake is supposedly coming this year as well. What makes the most logical sense for release timing? I could argue Metro Prime 1 Remake could be the big December game. Nintendo's actually consistently, during the Switch's lifetime, had a big game in early December. So maybe, you know, you got that Pokemon coming out like in the middle to, to second half of November. Maybe the first or second week of December, they're dropping the Metroid Prime 1 Remake. So then when could you realistically slot in Zelda? You know, October seems pretty packed, so that would feel like a weird month. September could make sense. You do have Splatoon 3 early in the month. Maybe you start Splatoon 3 early, end with Zelda. That would be really, really cool. Obviously, you know, August doesn't technically have a big game. There are some quality games coming out. Blossom Tales 2, as an example, is coming out, and that is an amazing indie game. But there's not, like, a headliner for that month. Maybe that makes sense. But then again, we're in July. August is next month. Would they really give us only a month to advertise before they release it? I don't know. They could, I guess. This is Nintendo. They do whatever the hell they want. They didn't give us long with Age of Calamity, now that I think about it. But again, I feel like they still want to have at least a couple of months. So... September, maybe? I, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm very curious what you guys think, where it could slot in. Do you think we're just not going to get them at all? Uh, and that's just that. Do you think they're waiting to announce it uh, that when the next General Direct is? I know some people feel like we're getting a General Direct in uh, in, in July just because we didn't get one in June. And Nintendo has a lot of games we got to talk about. Bayonetta 3 still doesn't have a release date. Well, why didn't they just show that in the Partner Showcase? Oh, maybe because it's going to be a headliner in their Nintendo Direct that still hasn't come yet. I don't know. Maybe it's delayed. I mean, that could be it, too. So, uh, when the hell is Bayonetta 3 going to drop? I don't know. You know, Nintendo does what Nintendo wants to do. And for right now, I just want to know what's happening. If, if, if we're not going to get those games this year, I, I don't expect Nintendo to, to announce, hey, you're not getting something because they never promised anything. But it would be nice to at least, at least see some sort of Zelda update soon-ish, if not on those games, at least on Breath of the Wild. Give us a little bit more to chew on with Breath of the Wild 2. I know some people expect hardware announcements. I don't know if that's happening. I know there's been a lot of things you can kind of piece together to, to, to maybe figure out that Nintendo's launching hardware sometime in the next year. I, I get all of that. I, I've done that piecing together for you guys in prior videos. But again, a lot of this is unknown territory. None of us actually know, including Jeff Grubb, what's happening with Zelda or when we might get New Harbor. Even Nate Drake, who knows, or at least acts like he knows, that a bunch of developers already have dev units and are making games for that new Switch, he still doesn't know when the hell Nintendo's going to reveal it or when it's going to come out. No idea. No clue. Nobody knows. Because at this point, guessing what Nintendo's going to do is becoming a bit of a crapshoot. But hey, Natrick did say the 28th for, for the Direct, so I'll give him that. He did say Mini uh, Direct Partner Showcase, one of the first person uh, to say that, and he said that a few days before it was announced. So, I mean, there is that as well. So he seems to be a, a pretty decently connected. Emily Rogers is backing him up as well. Emily Rogers is keeping pretty quiet, by the way. I think she's just waiting for the Metroid Prime 1 remake to, to get announced because she's someone who doesn't like to put out like a billion rumors and reports at once. She's been talking about Metroid Prime 1 for a couple of years now. It's like, it's time. It's time. You know, she wants to see, once that's announced, maybe she'll talk about whatever else she knows in the future. But I don't know, guys. This is a great way to start the week, though, isn't it? Isn't it? At least I think it is. Now, um, I do know before I sign out here that some of you guys 
Uh, or maybe, maybe I read I read every comment on my channel. I maybe I shouldn't read all the comments, but I I feel like it's the the best way I can get the vibe of the viewer base and the community because the dislikes are disabled. I know you can install an add-on, but like you guys can't see the public dislikes. And for the most part, you know, I'm going to get a lot more likes than dislikes anyways on average on my videos. 90% plus is pretty normal. So here is something that I, I do want to address and we're going to go into this deeper tonight. Uh, some of you guys are really, really tired of rumor, leak, and speculative videos. I totally get it. And I've done a lot of them lately. Honestly, from June through today, I can self-admit a majority of my content has been that. And I know it. I'm not stupid. I know what's going on. I got the pulse of the community. I know a lot of you love these videos, but there are some that don't. And it is out of flux with my normal flow of content. Yes, I've always covered the rumors and things as they happen and the speculation as it happens, but it's intermixed typically with a bunch of legit news from Prime News. Prime News episodes are always full of a bunch of legit news. I uh, just did a Prime News episode last week, but that was nothing but legit news. And people still complain. They still call that clickbait and made up rumor stuff, which is funny since there wasn't a single rumor or leak in that video. And it's probably why the video didn't do very well. Um, but I'm going to address this further tonight on live stream. So if you're someone who wants to have an in-depth conversation with me on it and have me go through my explanation for how I pick and choose what videos to make and, and what to do, and maybe even help me come up with ways that I can somehow get actual news uh, promoted a bit better to you guys. Uh, show up to my live stream tonight at 8 p.m. Central Time. You don't have to super chat or donate or do anything crazy. Just come in, have a conversation, ask me the questions you want to ask or make the complaints directly to me while I'm live that you've always wanted to make about my channel. Uh, come in, let's have that open that open forum and uh, discuss you know, content creation on YouTube. All right, I, I feel like it's an important conversation to have. So let's have that tonight at 8 p.m. Central Time right here on Nintendo Prime. Anyways, thank you guys so much for tuning in. And you know what? I'll catch you in that live tonight, if not another video later today, depending on how the ebb and flow of news goes.